Folks, thanks for being here today. I'm John Stiles with Attorney General Ellison's office. I just want uh, uh, to make clear that Attorney General Ellison will be speaking today and then taking your questions. He will not be able to answer any questions about evidence or how evidence is evaluated, any question about witnesses, any question about the timeline of events that led to Mr. Floyd's death or any investigative detail. It is all under investigation. It is currently confidential. So I just want to set that expectation right now. With that, Attorney General Ellison. First of all, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Uh, on my myself and uh, my friend Mike Freeman want to share some information with you. I want to begin with a reminder, and that is that we're here today because George Floyd is not here. He should be here. He should be alive, but he's not. About nine days ago, the world watched Floyd utter his very last words, I can't breathe, as he pled for his life. The world heard Floyd call out for his mama and cried out, don't kill me. Just two days ago, when I became the lead prosecutor in the murder of Mr. Floyd, I asked for time to thoroughly review all the evidence in the case. And, and we looked at case the evidence that's available and the uh, investigation is ongoing at this time. I also said that I know it's asking a lot of people to give us time, particularly people who have suffered for decades and centuries of injustice, to be patient. And yet, we did get that time. And together, uh, a very strong, experienced team, uh, which included uh, County Attorney Mike Freeman, his team, and my team, we reviewed the evidence together with the BCA, and we have something to announce today. Before I announce it, I want to say thank you for the patience of the people who they've shown me and our entire team in pursuit of justice, and I'm here uh, to make these announcements right now. First, today <clears throat> I filed an amended complaint that charges, that charges former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin with murder in the second degree for the death of George Floyd. I believe the evidence available to us now supports the stronger charge of second degree murder. We've consulted with each other and we agree. Second, today arrest warrants were issued for former Minneapolis police officers uh, J.A. King, Thomas Lane, and Tu Tao. Finally, I'd like to announce that today Hennepin County Attorney Michael Freeman and I uh, uh, filed a complaint that charges uh, police officer King, Lane, and Tao with aiding and abetting murder in the second degree of felony offense. I strongly believe that these developments are in the interest of justice for Mr. Floyd, his family, our community, and our state. I'm the lead prosecutor in this case. I'll be speaking and uh, addressing the public uh, and this is, but this is absolutely a team effort. Uh, we are working together on this case with only one goal, justice for George Floyd. I want to thank first Mr. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman, who has been a true partner in this matter at every step of the way. His experience and insight have been invaluable and will continue to be counted on by the team. I also want to thank County Attorney Freeman's professional staff who have cooperated and worked together with my staff uh, and the investigating officers every, from the very minute this case started. I also want to thank Superintendent Drew Evans of the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension uh, and his professional staff for the care and speed with which they are conducting this investigation. And I want to thank especially U.S. Attorney Erica McDonald and Special Agent in Charge Rainer uh, Drolskagen who are conducting a parallel federal color of law investigation. I have heard directly from the leadership of the uh, Department of Justice that there is full support for her leadership in pursuit of her investigation. And as she put it so well, one team, one goal, one mission. I agree 100%. As I said earlier, I think Mr. Floyd's family I think, and I can speak for uh, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Freeman and I, jointly thank them 
along with uh, uh, U.S. Attorney uh, McDonald, we thank the community for their patience and allowing us the time and space we need over these days to lay these charges. <clears throat> As it is so hard to do, I now ask for continued patience. This case continues to be under investigation. We will not be able to say very much publicly about the investigation, except that we encourage anyone who believes that they have evidence in this case to come forward and to be cooperative with the investigation. As we develop the case for prosecution, which will, which will also not be, able, we will not be able to say very much publicly about it because our job is to seek justice and to obtain a conviction not to make statements in the press, but to put do our talking in court. So I ask for your patience again while we limit our public comments in pursuit of justice. I also ask for your trust that we are pursuing justice by every legal and ethical means available to us. I also want to add a word of caution. The investigation is ongoing. We are following the path of all of the evidence, wherever it leads. We are investigating as quickly as we can because speed is important. We're also investigating as thoroughly as we can because being complete and thorough is critically important, but it takes time. The reason thoroughness is important is because every single link in the prosecutorial chain must be strong. It needs to be strong because trying this case will not be an easy thing. Winning a conviction will be hard. In fact, County Attorney Freeman is the only prosecutor in the state of Minnesota who has successfully convicted a police officer for murder. And he can tell you that it's hard. I say that uh, I say this not because we doubt our resources or our ability. In fact, we're confident in what we're doing. But history does show that there are clear challenges here and we are going to be working very hard and relying on each other and our investigative uh, partners and the community to support that endeavor. To the Floyd family, to our beloved community, and to everyone that is watching, I say, George Floyd mattered. He was loved. His family was important. His life had value. And we will seek justice for him and for you, and we will find it. The very fact that we have filed these charges means that we believe in them. But what I do not believe is that one successful prosecution can rectify the hurt and loss that so many people feel. The solution to that pain will be slow and difficult work of constructing justice and fairness in our society. That work is the work of all of us. We don't need to wait for the resolution and investigation of this case to start that work. We need citizens, neighbors, leaders in government and in faith communities, civil and human rights activists to begin rewriting the rules for a just society now. We need new policy and legislation and ways of thinking at the municipal, state, and federal levels. The world of arts and entertainment can use their cultural influence to inspire change that we need. There is a role for all who dream of a justice that we haven't yet experienced. In the final analysis, a protest can shake a tree and can make the fruit ball that fall down. But after that fruit is in reach, collecting it and making the jam must follow. The demonstrations and the protests are dramatic and necessary, but building just institutions is more of a slow grind, but equally important. And we have to begin that work as well. We need your energy, and we need everyone's help right now. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a few questions. Yes, ma'am.
we believe we have a duty to charge the, the charges that fit the facts in this case when we have, we have done so. And so uh, our concern is to put the, all the energy we can into putting forth the strongest case that we can without fear or favor of anyone or anything. These, these charges are based on the facts that we have found and we're going to pursue them. The Hennepin County Attorney did an excellent job by gathering facts and has worked cooperatively with us at every single step of the way. Uh, we uh, cons consulted with each other on these charges. We believe that these are the right charges. Mike Freeman and I will be, we've signed a complaint for these uh, additional charges, and so uh, that's, that's what we're doing. So. The whole nation, indeed the whole world, has been awaiting some type of announcement from your office. Can you describe the process involved in your deliberation and what impact do you think today's decision might have, not just in Minneapolis, but for those across the country watching you right now? Unfortunately, I can't delve into our deliberative process, but what I will tell you generally is we gathered all the facts that we could, we reviewed the criminal statutes, we looked at case law, we consulted with each other, and we arrived at these charges. We believe that they're justified by the facts and the law. What does this impact have on them, this decision? The pursuit of justice is always good and right. And uh, we, I want to signal to them that um, uh, we hope that they continue to raise the cause of justice but do it in a peaceful manner. Uh, it is their right to express themselves. Uh, and uh, with that, I will say that they should, they should continue in their own communities uh, to get together to build uh, just police community relationships. We need the faith community to be involved. We need arts and entertainment to help inspire us toward justice. We need everybody. There's a lot more to do than just this case, and we ask people to do that. You know, I, I want to thank you for asking that question because part of my comments were to help um, set expectations in a realistic light. The, you know, in order to be thorough, this is going to take months. And I don't know how many, but it is better to make sure that we have a solid case, fully investigated, researched, before we uh, go to trial, uh, than to rush it. Uh, we don't, we're, and so it, it will take a while, and I, I can't set a deadline on that. Way in the back. Attorney General, Chris Raskin, Carolina. The, the Floyd family had asked for a first degree murder charge as well as their attorney. You decided to charge second degree unintentional murder uh, while committing a felony. Can you explain what that charge means, unintentional murder versus second degree intentional murder, please? Well, according to Minnesota law, you have to have premeditation and deliberation uh, to charge first degree murder. Uh, second degree murder, you have to intend uh, for death to be the result. Uh, for second degree felony murder, you have to intend the felony uh, and then death be the result without necessarily having uh, it be the intent. So that is the, that's the state of the law. The felony would be the, well, he was, we would contend that uh, George Floyd was assaulted uh, and that, um, and so that would be the underlying felony. Do you accept any plea deals in this, or do you expect all four to go to trial? And secondly, when will the body camera footage be released? You know, I really don't have any any idea of what um, plea negotiations or anything like that. That's simply way too early to begin that conversation. Uh, at this point. Uh, we are preparing to try this case. If something else happens along the way, we'll see. Um, but at this point, we don't have any. We don't. We don't have any plans in that direction. Camera footage. Um, you know that is something that I will 
Uh, I don't have anything to report right now. Uh, at this time, we're focused on investigating the case. Uh, and so I think at this time, I'll, I will consult with the BCA and uh, other uh, partners on the case, and we'll come to a conclusion about that. Again, we believe in transparency, but we also believe in a thorough investigation, most importantly. Then, Rob, the three officers been taken into custody? Uh, I'll allow uh, Mr. Drew Evans to address that issue. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Drew Evans. I'm the superintendent of the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. Uh, we are in the process of uh, taking the officers into custody. I can report that one is in custody now, and the other two we are in the process of uh, taking into custody and expect them to be this afternoon. Could you share about, have these officers provided any statements to your investigators, which traditionally happens after a death in custody? Uh, I will, uh, as the Attorney General said, we can't speak about all the details of the case other than what's really uh, in the complaint at this time. I will tell you with any investigation, as I've told you all from the very beginning, we have teams of investigators from the BCA uh, jointly investigating this with the FBI, trying to uh, obtain all information. In this case, I will tell you that is a regular course of all of our investigations to attempt interviews with all of the officers. We have in interviewed uh, numerous individuals uh, in this case, and uh, additional information will be provided as we move forward. Here's my Attorney General, do you have the folks you need to do this, or will you be seeking some sort of outside counsel or special counsel that you're authorized to do under the law? At this time, I believe we have the team to complete this work. I would like to just introduce uh, David Voigt as well. He is a deputy at the Attorney General's office. He heads the criminal division, and he, he has the lawyers to get this done. And also, we have some experienced lawyers at the Hennepin County Attorney's office. We're working on this thing together. Yes, sir. In terms of the timing of this decision, I know the Floyd family was hoping to be able to have more information on these charges before the memorial tomorrow. How much did that factor in your decision as well as uh, the protests with him calling for these across the country as well and growing up there? You know, I can say that um, I did not allow uh, public pressure to impact our decision-making process. I was prepared to withstand whatever calls came. Uh, we made the charge, we made these decisions based on the facts that we have gathered uh, since this matter occurred uh, and made the charges based on uh, the, the, the law that we think is applies. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's my answer. Yeah. It's going fine. It's going great. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time in Hennepin County uh, when I was a trial lawyer myself, and I know a lot of the. I know all these. I know all the lawyers there. I respect them all, admire them all, and we're, we're going along fine. Can I introduce you? Okay. Andy Lefevre. He's represents uh, Hennepin County Attorney's Office. His first deputy at. Uh, uh, for Mike Freeman, right. No, that, that I'm going to let the people who prosecute cases every single day to prosecute this case. Now, it is true that uh, I've tried a lot of cases and I've tried homicide cases, but on the other side of the courtroom, uh, the people who know how to prosecute, I'm going to let them do that work. You know, I, I think it helps me anticipate what some of the uh, some of the attacks on our case might be. I see no reason why we can't get a fair trial here. With the charges that were just filed, my math is correct. Do the three officers now face the potential same maximum sentence as Officer Chauvin? Yes. Well, um, but, yes, sir. And I apologize if you addressed this before, but does your involvement in this case now put you on the sidelines in terms of the legislative process and working for police reform uh, legislation? No. Um, I'll continue to do all the duties that I have, which involve legislative, which involve a lot. We've been very active in this civil space. Uh, we've been active in representing state uh, agencies and government. We'll be, I'll continue to supervise that as I always do. 
but I feel I feel very confident in it because um, I have uh, excellent professionals who are going to be focused on this like a laser beam every single day. I feel a tremendous sense of uh, weight. Um, I feel that this, I feel this is a very serious moment. I can honestly tell you I take no joy in this, but I do feel a tremendous sense of duty and responsibility. I don't know the answer to that question. Maybe. Uh, I would just uh, answer that in terms of that is left up to uh, the various uh, sheriffs that we work with on this. They make, uh, as Commissioner Schnell noted the other day, uh, security decisions in the best place for everybody in light of everything that's going on right now in the Twin Cities. Again, those are decisions based on the uh, analysis of the sheriff, and they work closely with the Department of Corrections to make sure that they uh, have everybody in their custody uh, where they uh, should be based on safety assessments. Thank you all very much. I will say to them that I pledge and I promise to hold uh, all to everyone accountable for the behavior that we can prove in a court uh, and that if I don't charge it, it means that we did not have the facts to do that. So um, I'll, I'll simply say that um, as the people who are legal professionals, professional prosecutors, uh, we are taking our duty seriously, and we are uh, working with the people who are, uh, gather the facts. And this is, and we are, and we have done the, we have done the work that we we believe is is possible, ethical, and right. Yeah, well, I mean, look, um, let me be honest here. I mean, our country has had, has under-prosecuted these matters uh, in Minnesota and throughout the country. And so I think the trust is a result of historically not holding uh, people who are public guardians uh, accountable uh, for their behavior in situations where we should have. Uh, so that, I think, is the origin of the trust problem. But we can't. We can't control the past. All we can do is take the case that we have in front of us right now and do our good faith best to bring justice to this situation, and we will.